Hello world, this is Tommy Haygood coming to you from Leesburg, Florida, the lakefront city in the Sunshine State. It's 76 degrees on the way to 86. This is Tuesday, June the 16th, 2020. I hope you're having a wonderful day. When you talk to people about the Bible, you need to start on common ground. You need to begin where you agree, and that may be difficult sometimes because you believe different things are true. So where can you begin? Over the years, I've found that the book of Ecclesiastes is a good starting place because its message is timeless and few people can disagree with what it says. The book deals with life under the sun, as this phrase is used throughout the book. Ecclesiastes is thus about life on earth, and it's not about life beyond the grave. The author is an honest person who's on a journey seeking to find out what is of lasting profit from all his labor under the sun. There are three main points that I would like to address in this study, taken from chapter 1, verses 1 through 11, chapter 2, verses 1 through 11, and chapter 12, verses 13 and 14. In the first 11 verses of chapter 1, the writer uses three illustrations to emphasize the point that life is a never-ending, monotonous cycle of ordinary events. In verse 5, he states, The sun also rises and the sun goes down and hastens to the place where it arose. This happens every single day of every single year, going back to the beginning of time. In verse 6, he states, The wind goes toward the south and turns around to the north. The wind whirls about continually and comes again on its circuit. Again, the changing of the wind occurs every single day of every single year, without exception. In verse 7 he states, All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. To the place from which the rivers come, there they return again. We call this the evaporation cycle, and it happens over and over again throughout the ages of time. Life is a ceaseless cycle of events that happens over and over and over again. Go back as far as you like in history, and the story is always the same, as life is a monotonous, never-ending cycle of ordinary events. Who can disagree with this? In the first 11 verses of chapter 2, he searches to find an answer to the question of what will make a person happy in life. How would you fill in the following blank? I will be happy if, fill in the blank, or I will be happy when, fill in that blank. You will fill in the blank according to what you perceive to be necessary to make you happy. What would it be? I will be happy when I'm rich. I'll be happy when I'm successful, when I have power, when I'm popular, when I'm married, When I have a family, when I can enjoy earthly pleasures, you can go on and on. What is it that you would put in the blank that will make you truly happy? The world says that you must have money, fame, power, talent, or popularity to be happy in life, but consider those who had all these things but died without finding happiness in them. Think about Elvis Presley, Steve McNair, Marilyn Monroe, Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, Robin Williams, and countless others who had everything in life the world says you need to be truly successful and happy, but they all died tragically without finding fulfillment. Think about Marilyn Monroe, who died on August the 4th, 1962, at the age of 36. Her death was ruled a suicide. As Joe DiMaggio, the second of her three husbands, said, she had everything to live with, but nothing to live for. The Ecclesiastes writer found all of the things the world says that you must have to be successful and happy in life as nothing but dead-end streets when it comes to finding real lasting profit and lasting pleasure under the sun. Fast forward to Solomon's conclusion in chapter 12, verses 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Fearing God and keeping his commandments is the reason we breathe air and take up space on planet earth. Those who fail to see this and live for some other purpose are destined to find frustration and failure. You might as well try to drive a nail with a toothpick or use a hammer to pick your teeth as to live apart from God and and his will for your life. You're destined to frustration and failure if you do. Life under the sun is to be lived and enjoyed, according to Ecclesiastes, but with the understanding that it's passing away and we will face God in judgment in eternity. The Bible is not given to take away our joy, but to keep us from destroying ourselves and to enable us to live a faithful, uh, fulfilled, purposeful life and to be prepared to face God in judgment when our short lives are over. Remember, search the scriptures, serve the Lord, share the gospel with others. It's a message too good to keep. Until next time, this is Tommy Haywood wishing for you a very pleasant good day.